everybody, it's Michelle, and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. I wanted to thank everyone who sent me these beautiful and very thoughtful Christmas cards. You guys really lifted my Christmas spirit. I received over 25 Christmas cards, some handmade Christmas ornaments, and one of my subscribers sent me this adorable box with the Union Jack flag on it and didn't put her name on it. So thank you, whoever you are, thank you very much. I also received this beautiful royal pen. I am going to treasure all of these forever. I do plan to set up a display case in my office where I can display all of my beautiful treasures. But I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who took the time to lift my holiday spirits. As y'all know, my dad has been in the hospital for the entire month of December and is going to be there for a while. But thank y'all for taking the time to send me some beautiful heartfelt messages. I really appreciate it. Now I am sending out a whole bunch of the Christmas cards this week and I also mailed out a huge batch last week. So I do apologize that my own Christmas card exchange, I am very late, but don't worry, you will receive a card back from me and I appreciate your patience as I'm sure you understand it's been a very rough December. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today. So you know what to do. Sit back and relax. Grab yourself a beverage and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. So I thought it'd be fun to go over some of the Royal highlights that has happened over the last couple of days. Now Queen Camilla hosted a wonderful tea party at Windsor Castle with a little girl who has a brain tumor. Now the little girl has spent most of her life on chemotherapy and was invited to Windsor Castle for a very special tea date with the queen. Olivia Taylor has a brain tumor which has left her blind but she leapt up to say hello your majesty as she met Queen Camilla. The seven-year-old tried her very first cup of tea as part of her visit to Windsor. She was invited after the queen learned Olivia had performed with the choir at Buckingham Palace as part of the pre-recorded King's Christmas broadcast. Olivia, part of the Bexley Music Primary Choir, gave the Queen a preview during their tea inside Windsor Castle's white drawing room. She stood up and sang Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, receiving a round of applause. Now her teddy, Cory, which she was given around the time of the King's coronation, had a seat at her very own table. This is just absolutely adorable. Now the family is from Sidecup, Southeast London. They all pose for a photo with the queen before Olivia and her four-year-old sister Emma Jean gave a curtsy. At the end of the meeting, the queen hugged and kissed the sisters goodbye and asked Olivia's parents to keep her informed of her progress. The queen added, she's been such a brave little girl. I'm so glad to have met her. What an adorable moment. I think it is so sweet and kind that Camilla extended this invitation to this adorable little girl. Now King Charles delivered his second Christmas speech as monarch and I thought he did a wonderful job and shared a great Christmas message. I've always found King Charles to be a very eloquent speaker and I thought he did a fantastic job. Now during his speech he praises the selfless volunteers and urges people to be kind in his Christmas speech. I couldn't help but wonder if Harry and Meghan were listening and receiving the message that he was putting out. Now King Charles, he also urged people to come together amid conflicts that we have abroad. 
Now, describing community stalwarts as the essential backbone of our society, he said he was delighted to have them attend his coronation in May, noting that they embodied the meaning of the ceremony, a call to all of us to serve one another. That is one thing I love about the royal family is they constantly highlight the need to give back and serve others others. It is not about self. The king's reminder that one of the central tenets of Christianity, treat all like you want to be treated. He said at a time of increasingly tragic conflict around the world, I pray that we can also do all in our own power to protect each other. The worlds of Jesus seem more than ever relevant do to others as you would have them do unto you. Christianity is a central theme throughout this year's message, which the king wrote himself as he highlights the need to support those less fortunate than ourselves. Again, he did a brilliant job on his Christmas message. He is so eloquent when he speaks. And again, I wonder if Harry and Meghan actually took the time to listen to his speech and to hear the words that he was saying because I feel they can learn something from the power of the message that he gave out. Now, I believe they showed a clip highlighting some of the works of the royal family. And of course, Harry and Meghan were not included. And many people were very upset about it, but I don't understand why. Harry and Meghan are not working royals. They have nothing to do with the actual part of the royal family. All in all, I thought it was a beautiful and powerful Christmas message. So on Christmas morning, we were all treated to the annual royal tradition of watching the royal family heading out to the Church of St. Mary Magdalene in Norfolk, which is near the royal residence of Sandringham. Now, they were all there. We had the king and the queen, the prince and princess of Wales. We even had Prince Edward and Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, their children, and of course, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Now, they were all there together, very festive, dressed in a lot of beige, blue, and green. Although I have to be honest with you, I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of some Christmas red. Now we had King Charles and Queen Camilla lead in the way to the church, looking absolutely stylish and fabulous. Queen Camilla was rocking a beautiful beige coat and some really nice beige boots. Then we had the Prince and Princess of Wales alongside their three children and little Louis, y'all, was finally wearing pants. Normally the tradition for a young boy is to wear shorts, but this year he graduated to his big boy pants and he looked really festive. It looked like he had a little tartan pattern of some blue and green. And there he was photographed with one of his cousins walking along the path. Now, I really do enjoy watching the young royals. They definitely have a big and mighty personality. And Mia Tyndall was there watching over Prince Louis. They really do look like they have a very fun and close relationship. And I'm really excited to watch the next generation of young royals grow up. Then, of course, we had Catherine, the Princess of Wales, looking stunning in what they call her Windsor blue. But like I said, I would have really liked to have seen her in a more festive Christmas color, more of a red, green, or perhaps a winter white, but she did look fabulous. But I will say I was not crazy about the hat. For some reason, it stuck out in front of her face. I don't like the design of it. But again, Catherine can look great in a paper bag. My only thing was I wish she would have worn a different color and perhaps a different hat. 
Now Charlotte looked adorable in a beautiful green coat with some navy tights and matching shoes. And it was also lovely to see Prince Edward and Sophie reunited. They had been apart from each other for quite a few weeks, both of them traveling on their separate royal duties. Now the big surprise of this Christmas morning walk was in fact Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson. For the very first time in 32 years, Sarah Ferguson was invited to join the family for their annual Christmas walk. Now this is a really big deal. Many people have said that the Queen would not have allowed Sarah Ferguson to be a part of the morning walk, but we do know that Fergie and Andrew live together at the Royal Lodge, so her being invited to this is a huge deal kind of sending the message that King Charles and Queen Camilla are sending a message of togetherness, forgiveness, and goodwill. Many people thought that this was a message that King Charles perhaps would open the invitation to Harry and Meghan, although I don't believe any royal invitation for Harry and Meghan was actually sent. But I did like seeing Fergie. She was very happy and very excited to be there. And she looked lovely in her Christmas green. And I like the fact she's a part of the family and she's able to walk with both of her daughters. I thought it was a very nice touch by King Charles by letting her be a part of the royal family tradition. Then, of course, we had Zara, Lena, and Mike Tyndale, always Fabulous. I love seeing all of them. There was over a thousand people who lined the path to watch and cheer on the royal family as they made their way to church. So again, a lot of people really enjoy this festive tradition. So let me know who was your favorite royal of the day. And do you think it was a good idea for Fergie and Andrew to have been included? Leave me your comments, guys, down below. Well, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have definitely become the modern version of Ghost of Christmas Past. Not even a whisper or mention of the gruesome twosome was anywhere during the royal Christmas celebrations. In my opinion, the royal family was sending out a very loud and clear message. We are together we are united, we are strong, and we are moving forward toward 2024 without Harry and Meghan. I mean, they even brought out Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson after a 32-year absence. What does that say? It means that the king is willing to forgive those who want to be forgiven and who deserve forgiveness, that everyone who wants to be there, everyone who wants to be a part of the royal family, everyone who is accepted and relevant is there, meaning the people who aren't there are not wanted, don't want to be there, are not forgiven, aren't accepted, and aren't relevant. That is the message they were sending, that they are moving on and not looking back to the ghost of Christmas past. Even in King Charles's Christmas Day speech, there was no mention of Harry or Meghan. They were not even in the photo montage showing the works of the working royals. Of course they wouldn't be because they're not working royals. They are not a part of the working royals nor the royal family. But what I loved was the fact they brought out Andrew and Fergie. To me, that was just a big message saying, look, y'all, we're just a big, happy family. We can all forgive and forget and come together. But we're not going to worry about the people who are attacking us, who don't want to be a part of the family. As far as we're concerned, they're dead and Buried. Now there's the rumor that Harry and Meghan might have been invited to join the royal family at Sandringham, but I heard they 100% were not 
invited. And I believe if they were invited, they wouldn't go. I mean, could you show your face after everything you've done to your family? I don't think so. In my opinion, they were all there together as a family supporting one another. They all know the horrible allegations that these two have spewed at the royal family, the Queen, King Charles, Camilla, Catherine, William, and they were all standing with them in unison. So in my opinion, they were giving a very big message that Harry and Meghan, y'all might as well be the ghost of Christmas past and wander the halls with all of the other ghosts who were there. But the only person who was actually making a reference to Prince Harry was actually Prime Minister Rizzi Zunak roasted Harry. Now this is what Harry has been reduced to is not only the ghost of Christmas past, but a royal joke. How humiliating for Prince Harry. Now, it was in a Christmas video that the Prime Minister released wishing his followers a very Merry Christmas from Downing Street. Now, I did watch the video and it was absolutely hilarious, but he did take a pretty big dig at Prince Harry. Now, in his video wishing his followers Merry Christmas from Downing Street, Sunet can be seen at his very own desk writing out Christmas letters. However, the Prime Minister, when he quickly realized he was alone in the building, begins to have fun bowling over a set of Coca-Cola cans while practicing his cricket bowling. He's later fussing over Larry the cat and gives him a kiss while putting on the final touches of the Christmas tree while watching the Christmas movie Elf. But the most hilarious part of the video is his phone starts ringing. And when he picks up the phone, he says, Harry, you've got the wrong number. Now that is a reference to a rumor that Prince Harry was going to call his daddy King Charles over Christmas. Like, do you really think King Charles cares if he gets a phone call from Harry and Meghan and gets to hear little Archie on the telephone or little Lily bit? Nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear from the gruesome twosome of Montecito. If they had any inkling of a royal reconciliation, it was completely demolished by the book Endgame. You can't keep attacking people and attacking people and then say, okay, let's all sit around and hold hands and forgive one another. The royal family at this point has nothing that they need to be forgiven for because Harry and Meghan are the ones attacking them. So I thought it was pretty hilarious and humiliating that Prince Harry has been reduced to the Prime Minister making a royal dig at his expense, and the real royals don't mention them at all. Talk about being irrelevant. I thought it was kismet. It was the perfect way to send out 2023 on everyone's opinion of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, meaning you're irrelevant, you're not important, and you literally are the ghost of Christmas past. Harry and Meghan have had a truly honest, horribleous year, and I don't think 2024 is going to be any better for Harry and Meghan. But to have the Prime Minister make a joke at your expense and the Royals not even mention you at all, has to be the biggest slap in the face. How many plates do you think were thrown in Montecito? What do you guys think about Rizzi Sunak giving Prince Harry a royal roasting? But I think Rizzi Sunak did an excellent job in the video. If you have a chance, make sure you go and watch it. Well, guys, that is all the royal news that I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.